SharePoint email alerts are going away. Microsoft has recently announced they're going to remove the email alerts functionality in SharePoint. We're going to talk about what this means, how you'll be impacted, and what the timeline is for those changes. Then we're going to take a look at what you can replace those email alerts with so that you can avoid disruption and make sure everybody can perform the same kind of email notification options. So now let's get SharePoint smart. Okay, so we're going to go through some general information and begin. As I mentioned, Microsoft has announced that SharePoint email alerts are being retired. And we're going to talk about a path forward where you can replace those email alerts with a new system using automated email rules. All right, so first let's review the timeline. Beginning in July 2025, the creation of the alerts is going to be turned off for a brand new tenant. So for those of you guys who are already in SharePoint, that's not going to affect you. It's really beginning in September where things are going to be noticeable. At this point, this is going to be incrementally turned off in SharePoint tenants. So no one will be able to create new SharePoint email alerts. And then in October, they're going to start with an expiration feature, which basically turns off the existing alerts. This is Microsoft gradually nudging the user base that this is going away. And then at the very end, by July 2026, this will be gone completely from the interfa interface. So clearly, we need to prepare and make other plans. This is the functionality that we're referring to. In the SharePoint interface, in the command bar, you can see these options alert me and then manage my alerts. This will be gone completely. That's what Microsoft is telling us. This is the interface that we've had to this point. Any user could go in there and set up a rule so that they could be notified when there are changes in the SharePoint list. This will be gone. All right, so we're going to talk about creating email rules, and I'm going to talk about some of the differences. We'll actually walk through it. So with the email rules, uh, we, of course, can set recipients. It works pretty much the same way. And then we can set triggers to send emails based on what items are added or modified. In the new system, we can actually get a little bit more dynamic with that. We can put a rule in there and do things to check a field value. For example, when status is complete or updated to complete, that type of thing. So we actually have a little bit more options in terms of being more specific about the trigger for add and modify on records. Item deleted works just the same way. Notifications are going to be immediate whenever these take place, so that's not changed either. In our old system, we did have the ability to have a summary mode for email notifications. So instead of getting individual emails after each change, we could get a, a digest mode of sorts, and you could do that for daily or weekly summary. That's not going to be available in email rules. You'd actually have to set up that kind of functionality using Power Automate if you want to do that kind of thing. We're not going to cover that in this video. Um, but that is not going to be an option through the email rules. So <clears throat> this is what we will now be selecting and what you should use to replace that system. In the command bar under automate, there is a rules section. And if you go in there, you can select to create a rule. And this is the interface that you're presented with after you select that option. And as you can tell, there's three main paths. One would be on edit, one would be one new item created, and then the other one's for deleted. And then on the next screen, we've got a few options. Of course, we can go ahead and set who the recipient is, or you can have multiple recipients. This will only be for users inside of your tenant. You can't put in an email to an external address. 
Uh, so we can have this happen always when items are modified or we can set conditions in here as well. And then I can put some kind of a custom message. I can't do any formatting in that. I can't do rich text editing or anything of that nature. It's just plain text that I can put in there, but that will appear as part of your email alert. This is what the email is going to look like. Um, the only part of this you're going to be customizing is the message that shows in the blue italic text. But that email notification is going to let you know the title of the record automatically, the list uh, where this took place, and then it's going to give you a link directly to that record, that blue button that you see on there. Um, so pretty much that's all prepackaged for us. We can't really alter that email notification aside from the content in there. We can create email notification rules in Power Automate, but that's really not what this video is about. So if you are looking for something more customized, then you're going to need to look at setting a Power Automate workflow if you need to have a more finite control over your e email notifications. All right, so let's go into SharePoint and we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. Um, so. Give me one second. So basically, first of all, let's take a look at the old way. This is what's going to go away. We have this alert me and manage my alerts. As I mentioned earlier in the video, that's going to be gone completely. So um, you're going to need to prepare. You're going to need to let your team members know um, so that they can um, be familiar with the new approach to doing this. And we'll just take a peek at that real quick, just to re-familiarize ourselves with what that was. So. This is the old way of doing things. I could go on here and I could create a, a rule <clears throat> for my list. And this is what you generally refer to as the classic pages in SharePoint, classic screens, that kind of thing. So I go here and create my rules this way. This is going away entirely. We're not going to be able to have this anymore. We need to learn the new way of doing things. All right, so let me go back and now we'll jump into the new system that we should use that's not going to be removed. Okay, so if I go under automate and then I want to go to the rules section, I can either manage existing rules if I've already created them or uh, just click create a rule. And that's going to show these three options. So I just click on the one that I need and then I can do further customization. So probably the first thing to do is just go ahead and pick who this is going to go to. This can be set to go to multiple recipients um, and then I can put a message in here. And then up above I've got options. So I can say always, that's just a simple mode basically. Anytime any item in the list is updated go ahead and send me an email. Um, that's kind of the shotgun approach or I can get more specific. So if I do if, now I can actually target a specific column I could, uh, you know, go to the status um, and say when status changes and then I can put the new value. So um, I can say chat when the status changes to active on a record, send me an email so I can get more specific. And that type of functionality is also available on ad as well. So if an item's created, if I want to get more specific and put a condition, I can do that. So generally pretty self-explanatory. You can also chain conditions together. Um, so, you know, you can pick from multiple, or I should say you can chain different options for the field values. You can say one of, and you can actually do uh, multiple. That's really the extent of it. It's not going to get any more sophisticated than that. This is really intended to accommodate simple scenarios. If I was going to do something more sophisticated, at that point what I need to do is go ahead and send notifications through Power Automate, and that's a whole other topic. If you are already familiar with Power Automate and doing emails there, that's going to be uh, more robust and more sophisticated in terms of controlling the email content um, and controlling you know, the different options that you want for that output. Another option I want to mention, which is a third party option, which is great, is InfoWise Ultimate Forms. And that's actually loaded into my environment. So if you want to have the option to create sophisticated email rules directly from within SharePoint, that's something I would encourage you to take a look at. You can uh, reference the links below the video. There's going to be a link to the InfoWise site on there. This 
orange option, the toolbar add alert. I'm going to click on that. We can take a peek and see what that looks like. This is a third party option and this would allow you to create email rules that would be much more sophisticated, but still easy to set up. Um, so I have a tab system. I can define my recipients, define who the sender is, and then I'm going to define my trigger conditions in this interface. So um, I could do on modified and I could do things like uh, set status after change equals active. So we're still doing trigger conditions, but now I can get a little bit more sophisticated. I could do compound conditions. I could do ifs and ors, that kind of thing. I can do a digest mode in this system and it supports that. And then for the email content, I can just come in here and, um, you know, put in the content that I want for that. And I can even do a rich text field. So if you're interested in having a robust email, rule system directly in SharePoint, you can do that. This is included with the InfoWise Ultimate Forms tools. This includes custom form building, custom print templates, import export capabilities, all kinds of extra functionality that's really useful and handy to have in SharePoint. I hope you found that useful. I know a lot of folks are frustrated at this email function being removed from SharePoint, but the new automate ad rules option is really pretty equivalent. Um, it's not exactly the same, but if you share this video with your other users, you should be able to see that it's not a big deal. It doesn't require technical expertise. You don't have to be a developer to create these rules. It's very accessible and easy to use as long as you know where to go in the interface to do it. So uh, by all means, share this with your users and help them be prepared so that when this option changes uh, later in 2025 and then is removed in 2026, the old option that everybody's ready to go. I hope you found that useful and good luck.